This is a uh, 2008 uh, 535e BMW and uh, in this car we have a problem with, a, uh, with the parking sensors and we have a code on the dash and the parking sensor not functioning. Now we uh, already found a problem, this was like almost a couple of weeks ago, we had removed this sensor here to be able to figure out what sensors we need to order it online. Now, what I'm using is a uh, one of these. Where is it? This is this one is actually ultrasonic sensor. But this one is receives and the receiver and uh, what's it called? The uh, transmitter. Yeah. So simply by taking this sensor and uh, hook it up to your test lead. It doesn't matter, you know, power and ground. Just you know, hook up those two leads to your sensor and um, I just put a little plastic tube and now you can see the, uh, the sensor here and uh, just a banana connected at the end of my lab scope. Now the settings of my scopes are 2 milliseconds across the screen actually and uh, voltage scale is I think uh, 1 volt. Okay, So let's go ahead and uh, check uh, each sensor. Now Nick is in the car and he shifted in reverse and uh, so the, for the sensor to work and uh, let's see uh, the signal from the run on a driver's side so what I need to do I really have to put my sensor very close I mean my, my probe very close to the sensor to pick up the signal we can, well actually from, from this distance we can actually see a signal okay and I can, I, when I put it right up against the, there's a signal Okay, now of course this one is missing. Let's go to uh, to this one here, and uh, this one is not working. I'm sorry about the glare. And let's go to a uh, this one. Okay, and uh, we have a signal. Okay, let's go to the back. This one is good. This one is good. And this uh, ultras these ultrasonic sensors like a couple a couple bucks. All right, so let's go to this one. This one is good, and uh, this one here. This one is good as well. So pretty quick diagnosis. We have a. Uh, front two sensors that needs to be replaced now checking the powers and grounds honestly I mean I'm just gonna get the sensors we already got the sensors actually and uh, we're just gonna put the sensors in and uh, yeah, they should be okay and then we're gonna repeat the test and reset the code I don't even know what the codes are but I uh, just look at the dash and there was a that uh, park uh, distance control malfunctioning and uh, so uh, let's check the, change the sensors and uh, we go from there Okay, Nick is playing with the uh, oscilloscope as well, so... Okay, Nick. Yeah. Alright, so that doesn't work. Go to that one over there. And we have a signal there. Okay, come over here. We've got a signal. Now go back and, uh, and uh, go behind. Now, when they, uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, check the one on the... We have four in, uh, in the rear bumper. It's working. It's working. Yep. Working. All work. All right. Awesome. So I got the sensor. Got the grill out. I got the sensor in, and uh, seems like it's not. It's not making a signal. It kind of intermittently, kind of makes some little signal, but not not much at all. You see there, a little blip, but not what we need. And uh, here's the uh, known good one. I'm still making a pretty good signal here. Uh, I'm gonna check my wiring, but most likely, you know, we, it's just a cheap sensor. It's not. It's not working. I mean, it fits fine. Everything looks legit, but something's not. Something's not working. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I'm checking the wire in the middle. Yellow and black, I believe it is. And I'm having a, uh, some voltage fluctuate quite a bit between 10 and uh, 9 volts. And then uh, this brown wire, all the way, come Okay, one on the right, that's 60, 70 volts. It seems to me that should be my ground. And one on the far left, it's pretty much zero volts, and that should be that should be my signal, I believe. And uh, so I'm not sure if this uh, power, the, the 10 volts, is that is that a, is that a good power feed or not to these sensors. And uh, so now I have to get the known good one. Let's see what I can uh, figure out. All right, so I grabbed the sensor from the rear left side. Now I have a original sensor. And let's see if it's going to make a signal or not. Okay, and uh, here we go. Nice full amplitude. So, you know, sometimes it's sort of going crazy and you know, trying to figure out what the voltage you got. If you have a non-good sensor, just, you know, because it's very unlikely to have some wiring issues with this anyway. So, get the new sensor in, one that you know for sure it works fine and, uh, you know, that's going to verify your wiring and everything. So, unfortunately, these... Uh, Aftermarket sensors are junk. They are, I mean, they look legit, but uh, they don't make a signal. So, but now on the middle wire, now on my sensor, and uh, this is a known good one, and uh, you can see we have some kind of a signal, some square wave signal taking place, and uh, it's almost like a CAN bus sort of signal, and goes from uh, you know body voltage down to close to zero. Uh, let's go ahead and put the uh, one that have the, the, the aftermarket one. Here's the aftermarket. It makes the, sen the signal as well, the same amplitude, but seem to be the frequency is a little bit different. Uh, it's uh, a little bit higher frequency than uh, the one, the uh, original one. So, well, I'm just going to replace them both and see what happens, but. It does not make the same when I was when I was checking my signal with a uh, my my probe. That it's not it's not making the same uh, sound wave as the other ones. And uh, check this again, and uh, kind of increase the voltage a little bit, and uh, right on the sensor itself, and you can see you see the the amplitude of a uh, of a signal it goes up to like 0.8 volts or so. Now we go to a aftermarket one. It does make a signal, but the amplitude is a lot smaller. That's the uh, like a 0.2 volts or so. So I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think the computer is going to like this uh, signal at all. There you go, it's, it's makes, it makes the signal, it's just the amplitude is leaking. I'm going to put it in, but I don't think it's going to work. Alright, so what I did, uh, this sensor here was from the rear bumper. I just wanted it to confirm the uh, wire integrity on this sensor and uh, on this uh, harness, and it's, uh, it's a good, healthy amplitude. So I put the aftermarket on this side now. And again, it's a very low amplitude. So now, the uh, the code is actually gone. It's nothing on the. Let's uh, let's shut it off. Turn it back on. Okay, let's go to reverse. Some kind of noise coming from the engine. But it's doing something. Let's see once we get up. This is normal or not, but... Uh, 
actually it's not because this is the uh, aftermarket on the rear left causing the crazy signal <laughs> so I guess the car is seeing the uh, something and now we can see that that's <laughs> kind of cool one in the, the uh, mid uh, right that's another aftermarket and uh, so now I guess these sensors the end the, the signal is different the computer is seeing some kind of uh, you know the module is seeing some kind of obstruction and now it's just uh, it's gonna do this crazy stuff this whole time I have to disconnect it but it's kind of interesting yeah that's what's going on absolutely this is the aftermarket sensor this is the aftermarket sensor as well so that's funny Let's drive it. Oh yeah, this is very... Uh... Wow, went right out. How about that? <laughs> I guess after a certain speed, that system is dis uh, disabled. But, you know, definitely these sensors are not... They're working, but I guess they're not coded for... Uh, for this model. That's funny. But uh, anyhow, that, that, that probe really works. Uh, very easy to make and uh, you know, with these sensors, I mean, if you have an access to known good one, just swap them and see if the harness is okay and you check your signal again. I mean, then, you know, going nuts, you know, look, you know, checking the uh, powers and grounds. I mean, you should, you know, of course, verify that, but the easiest thing to do is just to if you cannot, if you could get to the known good sensor, take it out, plug it into the uh, connector where you have a code, uh, and uh, see if the signal comes back, you're good to go. I mean, you got you just need a sensor. So, um, or of course you can uh, you check your power and ground in a signal wire. Uh, so, So there was a uh, 10 volts that I've seen on a uh, multimeter. It's actually that middle wire. That's actually a signal wire, and we could see a uh, square wave. Uh, it's almost like a CAN bus type of a uh, of a signal. So well, let's see what happens now as we get closer to the garage. Nothing happened. Whoa! There you go. Seems like the only works when it's in reverse. It doesn't work when you're in drive. Huh. Yeah. It's just annoying. Alright guys, well, I don't want to beat around the bushes forever so anyhow this is it uh, everything is fine you just need a new sensors but uh, yeah we got to find original sensors it will take care of the problem okay guys I'll uh, leave a link in the description to a uh, sensor that I use to make this probe uh, pretty much you just uh, attach the uh, test leads where you want to use a BNC or a banana adapters whatever whatever the scope you have and um, doesn't matter which polarity, just to plug it in, and you you're gonna find a, if if the sensor makes a signal, you're gonna pick up the signal from the uh, from from that sensor on your on your lab scope, and that's it. Uh, and if you don't have a lab scope, you're probably gonna use like a, you know you can use a multimeter. They should you should be able to see the signal just uh, you know uh, that they'll work as well. So, okay, guys, thank you. See you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.